So you want to take your game to the next level by adding a minimap, but you don't really have an idea where to start? Don't worry, today I have a super easy way to add in a fully functioning minimap to your game. Now if you guys have followed the progression of the dream game, you'll notice that I do have a minimap. I've gotten so many questions on how do you do this? Make a tutorial, this, that, and the third, and here we are. Now I've tried to make this tutorial as simple and headache free as possible, even if you are not a programmer like myself. And if I could do it by myself, I'm sure you can too. With a minimap in your game, you'll be able to stand out and allow players to navigate larger maps with so much more ease. Helps with their satisfaction too. So to start everything off, there's a few things that we're gonna need to successfully make a minimap with, uh, Pretty much no skill. We're gonna be using Plum's minimap system. I'll have the dev form link down below. When you click on it, it should look like this. Uh, they have a little tutorial here as well with uh, no voice, so maybe a voice one's easier to follow. If not, there you go, you can check theirs out. And uh, all you wanna do is click this itch.io link and try out the minimap here. Cool, that's just to try it. If you wanna download it, you click this download button and then you can pick a price. Uh, you can get this for completely free, however, if you have a couple bucks, you might as well toss it to Plum for giving us this awesome system. There's two more things that you're gonna need. You're gonna need a Roblox plugin called Row Render. I'll have that link down below as well. And then one more thing which may sketch some people out. I know it sketched me out at first. It's a third-party program that's not in Roblox, and it's, uh, like the sister. It's, it's, it's Row Render again except it's like not a Roblox plugin. So you'll need both of those. Everything you're gonna need is the first three links in the description. Now that we have the prep out of the way, it's time to actually make a minimap in our game. To use Row Render, you're gonna go ahead and click on the plugin in Studio. You're gonna wanna click Create Settings and then Load Settings. And then in your Explorer in Studio, you'll have the corner buttons inside the draggers folder of the row render settings. Now you can drag those corners to the edges of your map or you can click auto configure. Auto configure might be just a little bit buggy or could capture your whole map instead of just the spot you want to, but it'll save you a little bit of time. Now to actually render out your map, it's gonna render anything that's inside of this box. You're gonna to wanna to open up the third party program we talked about earlier, the row render application. Click on start server and then run your Roblox game in studio. Quick note, make sure you have uh, enable HTTP requests on or it will not render. That's in game settings and then security. Congrats, you are now rendering out your map. Once this is done, you'll just click download. One more quick note, if you have a lower end PC, you might want to hop into the settings of Row Render. Just that script called Row Render Settings. Go in there and there is a parts for shadows, resolution, and then a bunch of other shadow settings. I turn shadows off, I think it makes the minimaps look better. And a resolution, I would crank that down and then a render like... If for this video, I used one. You can crank that up as long as you want to and as long as your PC can handle it. Now you have your render. We just need to put that render into the minimap system. It's been a lot of information so far, guys. So let's take a break and chill. Are you enjoying the video? Then make sure to drop a like for your boy. It turns blue, it's free, everyone has a good day. Let's get right back into it. This is the final stretch, guys. We have our render that we just used row render for, and all we have to do now is plug it into the system. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is add a decal into your workspace on Roblox Studio and then upload the image you just rendered to that decal. Now if you go down to the asset ID and copy those numbers, you're gonna paste those into the script. Now that you have those numbers, you're gonna paste them into the script that's called settings under Plum's minimap. There's gonna be three different lines you have to change numbers on here, and those are 97, 98, and 99. The first one is map ID. This is where you paste in your decal asset ID, and boom, now your map is in that system. Up next, you need to paste in the center of your like your box, right? So if you go to row render, click on the center thing in the workspace, you'll just copy that position and paste it into the script here. The last thing that you're gonna need to do is on line 99, it says size. Now to get this size, you're gonna open up the center thing in row render and inside of that is a mesh. You're gonna click on that mesh and then copy the scale from properties and then just paste that into where it says size in the script. 
Now keep in mind, you do not need the middle number since we're doing a 2D object. So just delete the middle number. And there we go. Click play and you have a fully functioning minimap. This system does have a few other things that you can add in like checkpoints or waypoints. You can change it to a rounded minimap if you wanted to, and maybe even a few other things. Anyways, I hope this tutorial helped you out a lot and I'm looking forward to see how you guys use minimaps in your games. That is going to wrap up today's video. If you like this video and want to see more like it, check out this tutorials playlist right here. Guys, I finally did it. I finally pointed the right way. That's that's immaculate. Let's hop into everyone's favorite segment, the daily question and answer, guys. If you leave a question down below, it's likely you'll answer in the next video. These are three from the previous video. The first one is from Mr. Penguin Boss. And it looks like it's a question about my dream game. Can you make in your game an aging system to the bikes? So there's rust on the bikes that are older. This sounds cool and kind of fun, but it also sounds a bit pointless. On Roblox, people don't overly care about like the little details in a game. They just want it to be fun. And I would imagine, say you're, I don't know, you get a bike right when the game releases, and you want to make that bike look as cool as possible with custom wraps or skins, paint jobs, etc. And then it starts getting rusty. I feel like players would just be like, yo, what the heck? Like I spent so much time working on that bike and making it look so good. And now it's rusty. Like why? Like that's pointless. I think it's a cool idea if we weren't on the Roblox platform, but no, it won't be getting added into the dream game. Okay, this next question is a super long one and they have a super long name. Kalen's? Ra random videos. There we go. I had to sound it out back to preschool type stuff. It says, Hey, role builder, I'm making a role play game on Roblox, but I've been having some issues with studio certain plugins. All of a sudden won't open. Okay, hold on. The comma's in the wrong spot. The comma. I've been having some issues with certain studio plugins. Studio certain plugins. Yeah, the comma's in the wrong spot, man. Anyways, they won't open. And when I first load into studio, the game shows up twice. Then I refresh and it's back to normal. I've tried uninstalling studio. It still didn't work. Do you know how to fix this? Uh, if any plugin doesn't work, the best I could tell you to do is make sure the plugins are all up to date. And if they are, that's, I mean, that's pretty much it. There, there's not, <laughs> there's not much else I could tell you. With your game opening twice, I don't know. I haven't personally had that issue, so I don't overly have a fix for it, but I would just make sure all of your plugins are up to date and make sure you turn on the team create so things are auto-saving. That might help, I'm not sure. The last question we have for today is from VVSA Bro RBLX. Yeah, I'm not gonna try to sound that one out. How do you make your website? Do you hire someone to do it? Do you pay for it monthly? And how much do you make from your website alone? Now, I don't usually talk money here, but I know a lot of you guys have thought about making your own asset websites and are wondering if it's profitable. I would say no. I don't think it's overly profitable and it's sort of a race to the bottom. For example, if I make a tree, okay, and I sell it for literally a dollar. Okay, that means I get like, I think 28 cents from it, right? Every purchase, uh, every purchase has like a bit that comes off the top that goes into the uh, transaction, whatever. I don't know anything about it. I hired someone to make the website, okay? So I don't know how all the back end stuff works. All I know is it's probably not going to be profitable for you guys to make your own. Even with a pretty decent sized fan base and it being linked down below on every single video, my website generates um, a couple dollars here, a couple dollars there. It's not really anything crazy. Now, if you didn't have a presence on the internet, you could have the best assets in the world, but no one would know your store exists. So do I think it's a wise thing to make a website? Not exactly. Do I like having one? Yeah, like it's cool, but uh, I don't think it would be the best for just Joe to go make a website. And yes, I do pay monthly for the website depending how much traffic it gets. It's usually between 15 to $20 a month to keep the website up and running, uh, the hosting, the transactions, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it hasn't been over like 25 a month. I believe. So hopefully that answers that question. I think I kind of went all over the place, but you know, we're trying out here. That is going to wrap up today's video. Thank you guys for the questions. I'll see you in tomorrow. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Have a great day. Later.